Next, a beekeeper from Chile fights a world bee crisis. A Zambian businesswoman helps rural farmers improve their lives. And a North Korean defector helps his fellow refugees. All examples of the power people have to make significant change when finally given the chance. We were seven girls in the family and uh, one boy. And this boy was the last born. The fellow villagers uh, kept on laughing at my father. I started asking myself, I said, is it a crime to be born a girl? So it was from that time I declared anything that a man can do, I can also do it. <laughs> In South Korea, everyone is entitled to have a dream, which is a huge difference from North Korea. You may say it is heaven and hell. We are still very young. Every country, you know, needs a lot of years to get the old bad stuff out and, you know, change it for something which is better or good. If I make a decision and if it's not the best one, then I'm the one who is gonna suffer. So this was the tough part that I didn't think before. We have three children and we have to make efforts for their sake. We fight for them, to give them something better, to give them a better future. A better future. That's a goal all of these people, indeed all of us, have in common. In a moment, we'll share their remarkable human stories of survival, triumph and lives in transition. There are also stories of nations transforming themselves in ways that are allowing people to rise out of poverty and take control of their own future. From Zambia to South Korea. From Slovakia to Chile. Newfound economic freedom is changing lives. I'm Johan Norberg, and I've been studying economic freedom for decades. What is it, and what impact does it have on people's lives? In the last 100 years, the world has created more wealth, reduced poverty more, and increased life expectancy more than in the 10,000 years before. Since the beginning of recorded history until the year 1800, the average person's income barely changed, but in the 200 years since, they increased by 2,000%. How did that happen? And what role did economic freedom play? I'm here in Montreal, Canada, outside the offices of the Fraser Institute, whose work on economic freedom has become the gold standard used by economists, researchers, and policymakers around the world. The Institute has developed an objective way of measuring the economic freedom of a country. And they've created a report that I've often used myself in my writings and lectures. But the economic freedom of the world report is not just about numbers and charts and graphs. No, it's really about people. People who want the opportunity to work hard, to become self-sufficient and independent, and to improve their quality of life. 